Bill Maher did an interview with the Charleston Post and Courier uh, before a comedy show that he was scheduled to do. And he said something that raised some eyebrows about Donald Trump. He said, quote, even though I don't agree with everything Donald Trump says, by far, it is sort of refreshing to have a politician who isn't always walking everything back and who isn't completely pre-programmed. That's his genius. He doesn't apologize for anything. He's the king of brushing things off his shoulder, and this is what's attractive about him. I have to say, as somebody who did a show called Politically Incorrect, who was always being criticized for speaking too honestly. So Mediaite has a piece about this, for example, and I forget who's the person that posted it, but he was like, you know, Bill Maher is calling Donald Trump a genius about something, and it's kind of framed in this way as if to suggest like, oh my goodness, how bombastic and ridiculous for him to say that. But obviously, once you read his actual quote, and once you put it in context, you go, oh, not only does that make sense, I think it's totally correct. You know, there's got to be some sort of explanation beyond just Donald Trump's ideas, which accounts for his popularity right now. I mean, we all know Republicans don't care about ideas anyway. So what is it? I mean, how can you account for the fact that in basically every poll now, he's winning by a wide margin? I mean, he's like double Jeb Bush, who's considered by the media, ooh, the front runner, the serious candidate. And Trump is destroying him. How can that be? And I think Marr hit the nail on the head. There's something in human nature, and e e even going further than that, in animal nature, that responds to confidence. And even if it crosses the line into arrogance, I, I think people have this response to that where they, where they go, you know, I might not even like the guy, but ooh, I have to respect him. He's got his chin up, he's got his chest puffed out, he's serious. This is one of the main reasons why Bush won. I mean... Think about the fact Bush wasn't only elected, even though Gore beat him in the popular vote, but he was re-elected. He won by more in the second election against John Kerry. I mean, you would think John Kerry should have fucking beat him easily. We're talking about like, George Bush. He's just not that bright. He's not that intelligent. Well, how did he win? Well, he said, you know, you may not always agree with me, but you know where I stand. And he's unapologetic, and he doubles down, and the Republicans are known for this. They're known for... You know, always hammering home ideas to the point where, as Marr himself has said, Republicans move polls, Democrats cower in front of polls, and they go, oh my god, we only have 48% of people with us, what are we going to do? Sometimes the Democrats have a majority and they're still like, oh my god, it's only 57%. Marijuana legalization, 58% of the American people are with that. The Democrats are like, eh, not enough yet, let's wait till it gets to 87%. The Republicans will see something polling at 40% popularity, a belief that they have, and they go, great, now let's move it to 56%. And we can do it. We can hammer it home. They all get on the same page. They all stick to the same talking points. Jenk spoke to a former uh, congressman. I'm blanking on his name right now. Oh, Joe Walsh, uh, a Tea Party congressman, known for being abrasive. And that's something that Joe admitted to Jenk. He was like, no... Yeah, they would give us, at the beginning of the day, we would get our talking points from the RNC, from the party. they say, here, this is what you talk about today. This is your uh, a talking point on the economy. This is your talking point on health care. This is your talking point on abortion or whatever the issue is. Just go out there and repeat it. And then you'd see on all of CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, all nightly news shows, the Sunday shows, they just over and over, they repeat, 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 and they say it unapologetically. And then what happens is you move the needle. And the thing is, you don't even need to get people to like you to move the needle. You can move the needle and be disliked. That's fine. And that's what Trump is doing here. Because if you ask people, hey, do you like him? They go, eh. But if you say, well, would you vote for him? People go, hmm, yeah, more so that. Now, obviously, the effect is primarily in the Republican base. But, I mean, even, I guess, independence now, he's moving the needle, too. And... Just to put it in perspective for you, think about it like this, man. And I've, I kind of made the same argument as Mar not too long ago. It's my confidence theory. And I was responding to the Bloomberg tape where everybody's like, oh my God, we love Donald Trump. Or they were talking to a room full of Republicans and they were just saying, he's honest. You know, he's honest. He keeps it real. Basically, a lot of this stuff that Mar's saying here. It's the confidence theory. So here's how it works take the issue of Obamacare and death panels. Now, when you and I heard everybody on the right and all the, the thought leaders, all the media figures talk about death panels, what did we do? We rolled our eyes. And we're like, that's so ludicrous, that's so insane, that's so over the top. 
that you're not you're not even going to convince anybody because it's just demonstrably untrue. Who believes that Obama really wants to kill your grandma is going to set up death panels? Who believes that? That was our reaction. What was the reaction of a normal person who doesn't really follow politics? They're not necessarily in agreement with the Republicans or the Democrats. They just are kind of apolitical. And they go to work the next day and everybody's standing around the water cooler and then you hear somebody bring up that somebody mentioned, ah, death panels and Obamacare. What reaction are they going to have? I'll tell you what reaction they have. It's not the one you think. It's not the reaction we have where we go, that's so ridiculous. It's obviously untrue. No, what they say is, well, I mean, I don't know about that, but everybody seems so convinced of it, and we're talking about the idea of death panels. So, while I may not agree that there are death panels in Obamacare, because I don't know, it still has got to be pretty bad. So you see the way it works? There's an old saying, uh, if you shoot for the stars, you might reach the moon. So when you go too far in politics, when you say something that's untrue uh, and, and goes way beyond the pale, what happens is while people might not agree with that specific statement, they get this sensation, this feeling of it's still got to be bad because these guys are pretty sure of themselves and they're pretty loud and they're pretty aggressive and they're saying that there's some horrible things in this piece of legislation. So I may not agree with them. I get that it's pretty bad. And I'm just going to say my general feeling on Obamacare is I don't like it. And that's what reflected in the polls for a very long time. Now, when the Democrats finally started fighting back, then the polls kind of even themselves out. And to be clear, all the provisions in Obamacare were always ranked uh, overwhelmingly popular when you gave people specifics. But the genius of what the Republicans did in their marketing strategy is they're so loud and aggressive and over the top uh, with their attacks on the entire bill that for a long time there, when you ask the American people, Are, do you like Obamacare? It'd only be like 45%, 46% said yes. And that's the Donald Trump effect. He's doing the exact same thing and Mars 100% right.